Hey guys, what's up? Uh, this is Steve. Today, let's go through another lead code problem 981, time-based key value store. Let's take a look at the problem description first. Create a time-based key value store class time map that supports two operations. Number one is set, which takes three parameters, key, value, and timestamp. So this is kind of a mutation or an addition to a regular hash map, which takes an additional parameter, which is timestamp. Usually a hash map or just a regular commonly seen map just takes two parameters. One is key, the other is value. This one is just an immutation. Third, no, number two, number two operation is get. So get instead of just a regular get method, which takes one parameter only, which is the key, this one takes two. The addition to this is a timestamp. All right, so let's take a look what the get method requires. It has three requirements. Number one is returns a value such that set key value timestamp underscore previous was called previously with a timestamp underscore previous less than or equal to timestamp. Okay, if it's not clear yet, no worries. We'll go through one example and then things will be clear. Second requirement is that if there are multiple such values, it returns the one with the largest timestamp underscore previous. So we're trying to find the most recent one if it's possible. Third is if there's no such values, we can return an empty string, empty string here. Okay, let's go through this one example. Here's the input timestamp. Timestamp is just to initialize the constructor, to call the constructor and initialize the object. Output is now, which makes sense. Set, set returns now, right? So set is always, set return type is void, so it doesn't return anything. So set, what do we set? We set the key is foo, the value is bar, and timestamp is one. So this is what we set. And then we call get, we get foo, and timestamp one. So we're going to get bar, right? This is a perfect match. And then we call get foo, timestamp three. We call get foo, foo is here, timestamp three. We don't have a timestamp three here. The biggest one, the most recent one, the closest one that is up to three is one. So we return bar here. We return bar here as well. Then we call set. Now we call set with what? We call set with foo. It's still foo. And the bar, the value becomes bar two with a timestamp four. Okay, so here it doesn't necessarily mean that the the key with the key equals to foo, the timestamp is one, the value is bar. This entry doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily mean get removed. Right? It's actually not. It's just the meaning that we have a new entry with a more recent timestamp matching to the same key got added into this mutated hash map. Right? So that is why when we call get foo is key, key is foo, and timestamp is four, we're returning bar two here. We're returning bar two here. And then we when we call get foo five, timestamp is five, we're not returning bar anymore because we have another timestamp which we have another entry with matching the same key but with a more recent timestamp is four instead of one. So we're returning this one. We're returning this one's value, which is bar two here. This is how this mutated hash map or they call it time-based key value store. This is how it works. If we can walk through a second example, things will be even more clear. Let's say the input is timestamp. So this is to initialize an object of this time-based key value store. Set. So we set. Set what? Set love. This is the key. And timestamp is 10. Value is high. And then we set again. We set love. This is still the key, the same key. And timestamp is 20. Value is low. So we set, we set twice. We set two entries in this time-based key value store, right? We can retrieve both 10 and 20. We can retrieve both high and low. You see high and low, both of them are retrieved. That means none of the entries based simply based on the keys are erased if there is a more recent timestamp mapping to the same key comes in, right? That's what it means. And then we call get. One, two, three, four, five. We call get five times. So see here, the first get we call with love. The key is always love since we enter it only to love. You can call whatever you want, but it's not going to return anything. For the simplicity of this example, it calls 
get five times all with the key equals to love and then with different timestamps timestamp the first example timestamp is five what are we going to get we're going to get nothing right it's an empty stream why is that because there is no such a 10 timestamp that is less than or equal to five right the minimal is 10 right so that's why it's returning empty stream next we call get love 10 timestamp is 10 luckily we have one timestamp that exactly matches 10 which is here that is why we're returning high and then third time we call get we call get love do we have a 15 timestamp in the mutated hash map no we don't have it and then we try to find the last previous one that is most closest to 15 which is what which is 10 right so we set we set 10 here we set timestamp 10 value to be high that is why this call will return high here right i hope that makes sense and then we call love still the same key but timestamp is 20 so we have an exact match so we just return low here and then we call the same key key love and then timestamp is 25 do we have a 25 timestamp in the, the uh, in the stall no we don't have it but the closest one that we have is in 20 what does 20 have 20 maps to low that is why we're returning low here so the the idea that came to me is that we can apparently we're going to use a map but how can we have a one more dimension, which is the timestamp? If we are simply using a regular hash map, the key is just the key and the value is just the value, then how do we uh, get control of the timestamp? It's apparently one more, one more dimension in this hash map, right? Um, there are multiple different ideas you can, um, so basically you can have, you can create an object and then for the value of the hash map you can use that object this object only has two fields one is timestamp the other is the value right you can do it that way the problem that comes with that idea is that you have to sort sort everything in that in the value set right based on the timestamp then you try of course you can do you can use a you can use a linked hash set since the timestamp is it is strictly increasing right it says timestamp are strictly increasing and then you can do a binary search that is one way the more straightforward or the easier way for me is i feel we can use a tree tree map right we can use a tree map instead of creating a customized object maybe you can do that time and space complexity might not be even worse uh, to me i feel it's more concise that we can just use a tree map as the value as the type of the value of the mutated hash map the key of the hash map is still going to be the key it's still going to be the key and then the reason why we want to use a tree map is because for tree map all of the key set it's ordered by descent by natural order which in this case is what is exactly what we want right and then First, we'll call tree map get key, and then we'll get a hash map. Inside this hash map, the key is going to be the timestamp, and it's in order, so that we can very easily get whatever we need. If it exists, is if it's if there's a perfect timestamp match, we can just directly return. Otherwise, we can call floor key, which is going to find us the greatest number that is less than or equal to the timestamp. I hope that makes sense. Let me put the idea into the actual code. Hopefully that help that will help. So here we'll have a map uh, type is going to be string and then the value type is going to be map. Then here what we'll have is integer and then string. I'll just call it map. So once we initialize this, we can just call it hash map. All right, what well, then we do set. So first we want to check if map contains key, this key. If it doesn't, we'll just initialize one, put new tree map in here. And then what we'll get is we'll get this, right? So we get this, what do we get? We get the one that we are going to get is this tree map 
I need one more. Oops. I need one more. Close parenthesis here. And then, oops, this is wrong. What I want is this type. And I'll call it the time map for simplicity. And then we'll get this. Now we'll set it time map put time stamp and value. This is the set method. All, all the way up to this point is very clear. No any questions. I don't believe so. It's very straightforward, right? We can all that this class will have is just a map. The type of the map is a string and a tree map. All right. And then we um, a little bit trick here in get is that we can call an API in tree set, which is going to help us to get the closest timestamp that is small that is either smaller than or exactly equal to the timestamp. All right. So first we'll have this, I'll just call it time map again, and then we'll call map get key. Uh, what if key doesn't exist? Uh, let's not consider that. Do Is there a constraint? Will be called this many times, operation strictly increasing. Let's not consider key not, doesn't exist yet, see if it can be accepted. Um, and then so we'll call previous time time map floor key so this api is going to return us the number the timestamp that is closest but still smaller than or equal to this timestamp this is the beauty of using a tree map uh, and then Let's use integer instead of int primitive type because it's possible that this one returns me a now. If that is the case, prev time equals now, that means we don't have such a possibility, which is this one, right? Which is in this case, it's, return, it's returning an empty string, which is here. Love, the key does exist, but the timestamp five there is no such a thing in the key value in the time based key value store that is exactly smaller than or equal to five so we're returning empty string here return empty string otherwise we'll just return time map get previous time all right uh, this is it let me hit run code to see there if there's any compile error all right, no compile error. Let me hit submit. All right, accept it. Uh, it's not super impressive in terms of time and memory, um, but it's fine. Um, I guess there's no such a con case that it's not, all of the test cases are very valid. It's not testing the con case of whether the key exists in the key value store or not. Let me hit submit one more time. 50, 20, no big difference. But anyway, here's the idea of how we can choose a combination of different data structures, of existing diff different data structures, do a combination or permutation, do whatever you want to help solve the problem. HashMap is a very powerful and very mature long existing data structure. Feel free to use that to the best of your knowledge. Um, com problems like this may come in, in your real on-site or phone screens, which is very common. So practice this, hopefully this makes sense. Um, if it does, please do me a favor and gently tap the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm and I really appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel as I have accumulated a lot of different data structure algorithms, computer science or interview or Amazon Web Services certification exam tutorials. Hopefully I'll just see you guys in just a few short seconds in my other videos. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.